Hi guys, welcome back to Ben's Home Video, where today we're looking at the Screen Factory release of the 1982 Sleepover Slasher. That's right, it's a Slipper Party Massacre. As always guys, I never asked you to like this video or subscribe to my channel. So this is the double release, that's what you want to call it, of the Slumber Party Massacre uh, films. There is a three. For some reason I didn't do it. You tell me why. So 4K wise, both the discs are they're both the films are on one disc, then the Blu-rays are on separate discs. I don't know why that is. There are short films, so maybe I thought it don't matter. We'll whack it all on one. And no slipcover, which this is a pre order, so. But apparently they didn't do them for this. Don't know why. This double feature of Slum Party Massacre has Dolby Vision and the 2.0 mono track is DTS HD Master Audio. It sat around. 75 to 85 on the old bitrate, which is pretty sweet. And it said it was mastered to uh, 6,777, which I've never known anything mastered that high, especially for such a low budget B mover. Let's get into the thick of it. So, as I said, Dolby Vision. The Dolby Vision was Dolby Visioning. Blacks were nice and deep for, as I said, such a low budget B mover. It looked great. Obviously, you get with um, I can't think of the exact word now. When the titles are appearing on the screens, like you're always going to get blemishes and stuff like that. Even in 4K, even when they've cleaned up the video, it's kind of the film. Sorry, it's still always going to be there, but we we don't care. It's fine. It's only the opening credits. Yeah, quite a dark film, in the sense of lighting. But that's where the Dolby helps. You can see a lot clearer uh, things. So I've seen this on Amazon streaming, and now this. That's the only two ways I've seen it. I've seen it on DVD or Blu ray, I've only seen it on streaming. And it wasn't great. This was good. This was real good. Yeah, as a, um, primaries, whew, your reds are red, your greens are green. Not much blue in it, but, but yeah. The film ground resolved very well most of the time. Looks very filmic, what we like. The close ups look great. Oh, there's quite a few close up face shots, and they are looking good. So, there's a bit of sweat, bits of stubble, bits of blood, bits of everything. You see it all. You see it all. So, I watched Funhouse and Alligator quite recently, both done by Screen Factory, the 4Ks. And they are stunning reference quality for me most of the time. And some of Party Masker doesn't quite live up to that, but it's pretty good. There aren't much to say about the audio, to be honest. It's 2.0 mono, so you're not getting any directionality really. Everything's clear. You can hear, there's like one time that I couldn't hear exactly what they said when something else was going on at the same time. That was only once, or maybe I wasn't concentrating properly, because all the rest was fine. And it's quite a noisy film at times, but. Yeah, not much bass, not anything. It's what audio, uh, audio. It's what mono is. It's all right. So I'm going to give this a four out of five because I feel like it's an odd choice of film and probably took a lot of effort to um, restore to this quality. So I'm pretty happy with it. And my thoughts on it that much. As I said, I've seen it once before. It ain't anything to go, oh my god, you need to watch this film unless you want to see some girls play basketball without some bra without their bras on. Um But and at the time maybe it was a bit more fresh. You know, nineteen eighty two. You had stuff like Halloween, Friday, Burning, all that had all come out at that point. So it was what was fashionable at the time. 
but looking like it's tired and not overly original. But yeah, I mean, it's a stupid premise, but I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it's fun. Has some good moments. The practical effects, there's not loads and loads of them. But they're nice when they're done. Like there is some actually that are really good. To be fair, so if you like these films, you may like some of Party Massacre. Friday the Thirteenth, The Burning, Halloween Four. So yeah, it's a three out of five film all day long. I don't think many people are going to say it's better than that or much worse. So now moving on to Slumber Party Massacre Two, which I've just watched. On a different day as you can tell by my lovely little outfit change uh, also my microphone has completely bust it just has like a buzz around it so i wasted a video that i did yesterday on it yeah uh yes yeah, so this has got the same dolby vision and same dts 2.0 track it's been mastered to 10,000 nits what's going on with this shit man i don't understand it where normally I think 4,000 has been kind of the highest I've seen. So we had some part of my like 6777, if I remember correctly. And now this at 10,000. Whereas the bit rate was 45 to 55, which I believe, again, is different. Just check my notes, which is what I should have done before I said anything. It's quite a lot less. Got 30 megabytes per second less. Still looked okay, though. We'll talk about that right now. So, very first scenes, average. Quite disappointing, to be honest. Then once you get past the title scene, or well, the main title that pops up, after then it seems to kind of get back into kind of a bit of a flow. Uh, yeah, and it's good. It is still like, I assume it's much better than the Blu-ray. I haven't watched the Blu-ray. And, you know, you're going to enjoy how it looks, but I don't think it's as good as the first one. It feels like the first one had a little bit more love put into it but it may be something to do with the original negative into positive or how it was stored or whatever but just overall the first one to me looks a bit better green's not as good but still pretty good your reds like blood and stuff pretty sweet your reds are really good actually yeah black level's pretty decent not amazing but really good there is quite a few moments that are soft. There's one scene where it keeps cutting backwards and forwards quite early on. And the one uh, camera shot that is soft on each one. And there's a few moments sprinkled throughout. Yeah. Audio, almost identical to the first one, if not slightly better. But not much in it. Bass is decent. Dialogue's fine. Actually, you know, yeah, bass is better than the first one, but dialogue's fine. There's no separation, as I said, but you'll you'll be mostly happy with it anyway. So I'm going to give the transfer of some Party Mask 2 a 3 out of 5. Could do better. Thoughts on this one? Quite a departure. I've never seen this one before. I'd seen the first one. It's not this one. And it's got a whole different vibe, maybe. Whole different vibe. So, um, yeah, I don't know really what to make of it, to be honest. I feel like I get why it's the sequel, but also I don't get why it's the sequel. I feel like they could have changed a couple of things and made it its own original film because, you know, they've done film. There's like three or four films that have... Uh, Summer camps, so like Friday the 13th, Burning, um, whatever that one's called, Sleepaway Camp. Um, so do you know what I mean? So you can't be treading on people's toes just because your one hosts a slumber party in it. So I feel like they could have maybe got a completely different name for the film and it wouldn't be as weird. But yeah, I think as long as you know that you're going in for kind of sleazy, silly horror more silly than the first one i think you'll enjoy it and you know who else will enjoy it people that enjoy and not on elm street especially too
yeah, so I'm going to probably give the film another three out of five. The first one probably is a better film, though. But this has got nicer, mo not nicer, but better moments with certain things. Uh, yeah, uh, practical effects aren't quite as good, by the way. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys.